This towering beast is the brand new flagship of the Riviera range. Now, Riviera build their boats on the Gold Coast of Australia and they were real pioneers of the enclosed flybridge design and this is the ultimate expression of that. It was launched in March, it's November now and they've already sold 12 so it's clearly capturing the imagination and May, it's a bit of a whopper. That's right, that was an Australian accent. Enough of that though, let's get on board and have a look around. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. Let's start back here then, because this is quite an interesting platform design that Riviera produced themselves with the help of an Italian supplier. It's actually also a passerelle, so this is fixed here, and then these actually come up and down with the main platform so that you create steps up onto the quayside, or they go down and create steps down into the water. You can also mount the tender here as well, and it's quite nice to have these really chunky stainless steel rails to add a bit of protection, excellent bit of safety down here. At the transom itself, it's split, on this side you have access down into the engine room and then through to the crew cabin and then this opens up and it's just a big toy chest so you can have your tender here you can also store the tender on the bow to keep it clear and you can open this up and get your toys out into the water really easily moving up into the cockpit as i pass through here this is where you have your deck shower tucked away down here on the port hand side you've got boarding gates on both sides so you can open those up and easily get onto the pontoon on both sides of the boat rather than going off the bathing platform and this is the main outdoor living space on this boat and it's really versatile actually because you can fully enclose the area. You've got some clear screens that go in both sides. You've got this sunshade here that drops down to give you protection and privacy and these are air conditioning vents. So you can fully chill this area and really make it part of the saloon and this is where I imagine you're going to spend a lot of time relaxing, dining. You have a really good wet bar over here you get a first taste of the quality of the timber on this boat. This is gloss teak and it really is gorgeous. We'll see more of that in the interior, but you've got the usual stuff, sink, Aussie boat. So you've got to have your grills, cooling space down here. It's really, really well kitted out. Let's stay on the deck and we'll move forward down the side deck. Really very easy boat to move around. Very, very substantial guardrails that fall to hand really easily. And you get a sense from here of the scale of this thing. It does somewhat tower above the dock side. This is a nice touch down here. You've got your fillers here for diesel. You've actually got the fuel level reading here so you can quickly just spot without going into the boat to look at the instruments how much diesel you've got in the tank. It's very helpful. Keep moving forward down these nice side decks. You've got a side door here, access into the saloon. And this is a very practical boat. It's a serious cruising machine, this. People stay on board for, for long periods of time, cover serious distances, so storage is paramount. You've got these lovely big chests here, very, very helpful. The quality of the mouldings is lovely as well. It all feels very heavy duty. And these are just really useful spaces to chuck fenders, lines, covers, that sort of thing. And it's very easy to get to. Moving on to the foredeck proper, it's quite an interesting layout, but the reason it's like this is because, as I mentioned earlier, people do like to carry the tender up here if they want to keep the bathing platform clear. You've got to have space for the chocks and space for it between the seats, hence the big crane here. But actually, it makes for a very nice layout. You've got a nice amount of seating, you've got a table as well, you can have snacks and drinks up here. And yeah, it's another really useful outdoor living space. You've got an enclosed flybridge. These outdoor spaces are very important on this main deck. And uh, yeah, this is a nice one. Now though, let's head inside to the saloon. into the saloon then and this is a key feature you can drop this window down so that you have a really good connection between this galley and the seating area out there so you can pin this door open it's push of a button slides open but you can keep it open if you want to you have got the wet bar out there but having the access to pass stuff through here is really nice and it's a real liverboards galley this just cooling space alone is fantastic you've got these big chest fridges on this side then on this side you've got two more of those plus this one here, you know, there's plenty of space to, to keep stuff cool on this thing. You've got twin Miele ovens down here, induction cooking, two big things with an insinkerator. You don't have to worry about food scraps or anything like that. You can grind it all up and it can go into the waste tanks, dishwasher. Yeah, it's effectively a domestic kitchen. It's really nicely specced. And the finish is beautiful. This gloss teak is stunning. Looks great, feels very, very solid. The quality and attention to detail is lovely. However, there are a few sharp edges here that might hurt if you knock into them at sea. 
Again, you can see the craftsmanship here, this banister, the stainless steel, the leather, the gauge of it all, it's beautiful, as is this staircase that leads up to the flybridge. Obviously, have a look at that in a second. This is a very flexible area. You can sort of play with this layout to have it however you like. The table on this boat actually folds back behind the sofa completely. You just move the cushions, flip it over, and it disappears. So you can just use this as more of a sort of lounging space. But if you wanted a proper dining table here, for example, you could do that. It really is quite flexible. And this is a nice space as well. Dedicated bar area forward. You've got your glasses here, all nicely in a lit cabinet. Sink here, wine cooler, a bit more storage. And note how you've got all these clips and all the cupboards and the fridges to make sure that they don't fly open when the boat's at sea. Really proper stuff. Let's head up that staircase now. You've noticed there are no staircase outside up to the flybridge, so this internal one is the only way to get up to the top deck. And with a couple of hatches, you can actually seal this area off completely. And there's a bathroom up here, so you can use this as an area in its own right. Maybe if the crew are here, you're on a long passage, you just close it off and leave it peaceful and quiet for the captain. You can close it off, but of course you can leave it open and use this as an extension of the living spaces. And it's a very, very nice space. You can drop these windows down and you also have a sunroof so you can get some natural breeze running through here. You've got a big television here, another bar area so you can serve guests up here. And this of course is the only helm station on the boat. And what a helm station it is. It really is quite something very commanding. These four enormous Garmin screens here. It's really neatly arranged. I love the switch gear here with the backlit labels. The fact that you've got all of your controls coming out on this plinth here to the central driving position, throttles, joystick. You've got remote controls for the screens as well so you don't have to lean forward and touch them. It's a really nicely put together driving position flanked by another pair of fully adjustable leather seats. They really are the business. This would be a great place to be powering through some rough seas in. And then heading aft, we can go back out onto this sun deck via another set of powered sliding doors and you're out onto the sun deck. Now this boat has got a day head here, which actually is quite a nice idea because it's a long way from the next one because you're onto the main deck, then down to the lower deck. To have this up here is a really nice feature. It's quite a simple little toilet room basically, but you've got a window, you know, a nice view while you're in there and yeah, it's tucked away quite cleverly in that corner. And you're never more than about six feet away from a bar on this boat. There's another one here, nicely angled again to take in the view. You've got some stools here so people can sit and have a drink and you've got a proper dinette over this side with a nice table that opens up to double in size, a bit of freestanding furniture here. But like downstairs, it's a very flexible space. If you just wanted sunbathing space out here, you could do it. You can play around with it a bit, but I actually think this is a really nice layout. And this is a nice addition. You've got wing stations on both sides of this deck. It's a shaft drive boat, but you've got a joystick which controls the props and the thrusters. So you have IPS style control and you're in a great position here, not in see forward, of course, but you can see right down to the bathing platform. So if you're coming in stern two, you've got a great view. And being this high up, you've got a really nice overall view of what's going on in the boat. And to have them on both sides is really helpful. So those are the deck spaces. Let's see what it's like when you want to go to sleep. You come down to the lower deck via this really nice, gently curving staircase, and you have this atrium effect as you get natural light coming down from the windscreen above. It's a really nice way to come down onto the lower deck. Now, if we head forward, we'll start with the guest accommodation. There is flexibility down here. This boat's got a twin bunk cabin here, but you could have this as a study if you prefer, but if you want sleeping space, and obviously that's a good option. And to port, you have another guest cabin. This is a twin but you press a button and the berths slide together to make a double. That is an ensuite, but there's also access from the hallway for this cabin, and it also acts as a day head. And then right forward, you have the VIP. Very, very nice cabin, very bright in here. Twin hatches above. Again, you've got that big flat four deck that we saw earlier on. There's enough space to have side-by-side -side hatches, which means you get even more natural light down here. You haven't got opening ports either side in the hull windows, but obviously you can ventilate through there. There's lots of space in here, good amount of floor space, very good storage. You've got really big hanging lockers, both sides, and a really impressive separate bathroom as well. This is a very good space. It's a good example to show the headroom in here, separate shower cubicle, very, very luxurious space for your guests to sleep in. Now let's head back and check out the master cabin. So here in the master suite, the cabin enjoys the full beam of this boat. It's a lovely, lovely space, nice detailing as well, and you get 
a really good impression of how much work has gone into the timber on this boat. Obviously it's very clear up in the saloon, but I really like this effect here on the headboard. It's mirrored on the other side as well. You have a nice bureau here on the starboard side. That pops up with a little bit of storage underneath. In fact, there's storage down both sides, eye level storage as well, and a big walk-in wardrobe on the way in. Again, storage is not an issue on this thing. There's even more underneath the bed. And then if I walk around here, you can see again the scale of the cabin, superb headroom, no obstructions underfoot, and a really nice big bed with decent bedside tables on both sides. The bathroom is here just at the end of the bed, and it's very luxurious, separate shower cubicle, separate toilet, and you have the TV mounted on this bulkhead here. And this is a nice space as well, because even though we're in the boat show, we've got nothing alongside us, so you can sit and appreciate what these hull windows can achieve when you're clear at the waterline, great views out. Obviously you do have some portholes in here so you can get some natural ventilation in if you don't want to rely on the air conditioning. Lovely space, but let's go and check out the creek waters. Now there's a relatively even split between people who run this boat with crew and people who run it themselves. If you are gonna have crew, then it's not a huge crew space for a boat of this size, really only space for, for one crew member to be truly comfortable. You can have another bunk up here, so you can sleep another person here, but that really would be pretty tight. Um, for one person, it's okay. You've got obviously the bed here, you've got a microwave down here, a bit of cooling space, a wet room here, so you can shower off and use the loo down here. Television mounted up here. But the key thing is that you've also got direct access through to the engine room. The engine room, it really is quite something. This is a purposeful offshore boat designed to cover ground in rough seas. And in terms of engineering, it's absolutely stunning. And at the heart of it are these MAN V12s. You can have 1,500, 1,800, or what these are, 2,000 horsepower, meaning this 78 will top out at 34 knots. Cruise at 25 knots, and if you drop it down to 10 knots, you've got 2,000 nautical miles of range. As I said, this is a boat designed to go places. It's exemplified down here by the way that this machinery is laid out, the space in here, the amount of light. Access to the likes of the generators is superb. You've even got a little tool station, a workbench down there so that you can do running repairs really easily. And actually through there, there's access from the transom into this area as well. So you don't always have to come through the boat and down into this area. Walk in here and you can tell that this boat means business. There you have it then, the flagship of the Riviera range, the 78. And of course, the thing that grabs your attention is the fact that it's got that enclosed flybridge. But I think what stands out most on this boat is the attention to detail, the quality, the engineering, and the potential for long distance cruising in whatever the sea could potentially throw at you. It's a really, really serious bit of kit. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. We'd really appreciate it. And remember to subscribe to the Yacht Buyer channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new video.